Evening everyone, in this video we are going to be taking a look at a Philips Freevents PC that I picked up for free. Um, before we continue I will just say that I'm reshooting this whole video because I lost all the footage. I've had this PC for about a month now and like I said I lost the footage so I'm shooting another one. Anyway, moving on. Um, it's a Windows Vista PC, it's actually got Vista installed. Uh, there was an advert on Facebook that a Facebook friend of mine tagged me in and uh, they were advertising it as free. The whole kit and caboodle. Wireless keyboard, mouse, Dell monitor and um, the computer itself. And there was a couple of accessories that came with it. There's this infrared sensor and an antenna. Which I think is something to do with, the, I think it's a radio or a TV card or maybe both that's in there. We'll have a look later in the video anyway. Um, it does work. It does boot into Windows Vista. I can't remember off the top of my head if it's a 32-bit or a 64-bit operating system on it. Either way, I don't care. It works. And it's on Windows Vista. And I, I know people didn't like Windows Vista, but... I've got a collection of PCs with various OS's on from over the years and my collection just doesn't feel complete without at least one Windows Vista machine. And I've never really used it so I can't really pass judgement on it. I've only, well, my judgement has been basically based on what friends said when that was um, all the rage. Anyway. Here's our front. So we've got a card reader under there and the space for a floppy disk drive or perhaps another card reader which uh, I forgot to dust when I cleaned this out. This was absolutely caked in dust and fluff. Underneath this front panel was just caked. I had to take everything out from inside and give it a good clean. Down here We've got the um, front audio and mic socket and two USB sockets. Now disk drive under here and I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. It's a super right master DVD something or other. But I haven't actually changed anything on here except the pa um, power supply. But I can't remember why. Or did I check? No, I don't even think I've changed the power supply. For some reason I had it stuck in my head that I changed the power supply on here, but I'm pretty certain I didn't. I have added a fan on this side panel, just because I can. Now, I'm just going to turn this off at the wall and leave it for a bit. And I'm hoping this is going to do what I want it to do. This seems to have... I'm not sure if it's meant to do this, but... When it's off at the wall, you turn it on like so. Then you press this button, the power button, and it powers on, then shuts down, and then powers up and boots up fine. So we'll see if it does it this time. But I'll show you this is a fully working... Yep, there you go. And powers up again. I don't know if it's doing some sort of power test. The fan in the power supply is not making a noise yet, but it might. I've got a choice there. I can either take the power supply out and retrofit a replacement fan, because, well, I say retrofit, I could... They're easy enough to desolder the wires, and some of the fans just plug into the board in the power supply. Um, as you can see, it boots up relatively quickly. It's got 3 gigabytes of DDR RAM. It's got an NVIDIA GeForce 8500 GT, a video card, installed. And its processor is an Intel Core 2 Quad Q600 at 2.4 GHz. So, not a bad processor, at least not back then, anyway. Uh, I don't know what this is. It's the Welcome Center. I have no idea what the Welcome Center is. We can close that. It's got all these little widgets, as they called them. I had that up on Windows 7 o'clock. I loved the clock. Don't know why I just liked having a clock on my desktop. 
And that was clock, not something else. I know what it sounded like. I know what you lot are going to be thinking. Right, control. There it is. What I want to go to... Because I can't remember if this is a 64 or a 32-bit OS. We have... It's only a 32-bit. But it is activated. Allegedly. According to this, it's activated anyway. Uh, the other thing I want to do is just check on hard drive size, because I've, I've, I've not actually looked. I have no idea how big the hard drive is on this. So, I need to go to computer. We have... What appears to be a 360 gigabyte hard drive. So that's not a bad size either. And very little space is used. It's almost like this got put back to factory settings before that was given away. Because there really is very little space. There's 351 gigabytes free of 365 gigs. I don't know what system S, I think that's got something reserved on it. It's a partition of some sort. So, yeah, it's working. He's got something about the tech guys there. Cyberlink something. Adobe. Adobe. Reader 7 and the Welcome Center. Windows Photo Gallery. Windows DVD Maker. Windows Calendar. Windows Meeting. I've not found anything. Cyberlink Power to Go, sir. I've heard it. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. So, it works. Actually works great. Perfectly um, serviceable PC. Probably could do with a bit more RAM. To be perfectly honest. But let's shut it down. I'm going to move my can off the PC. It's not the best place to keep a drink. I can move the monitor a little bit. I'm going to move the keyboard out of the way. Like so. Tell you what, I'll jump cut till I've got this round the other way. Here we go. I'm round the other way. So this is the rear of the PC. Um, I've got the video card here with DVI and VGA. Wireless card installed as well. So that pleases me. Then it's got this one down the bottom. It's got socket for the remote. Yeah, socket for FM and socket for TV. So that is like a radio. See, there's the FM antenna, which would be your radio, FM radio. As this has got remote written on it, I am guessing this had a remote control. For the um, the doiki. Um, just try to figure out what does what. There's the USB. Oh, I'm sure there was this. Um, I'm sure this thing. Ah, unless you can do this with it, I don't know. I have to see if I can get that card out of there and see if I can find some information on it and. Um, find out more about it, but it's got two. Well, it's got IR2 and IR1 on this, so I presume you can have two infrared sensors and either had a remote control and that would have controlled the radio and the TV and whatnot on it. But uh, I can't seem to find any software actually installed on this. But anyway, um, if you want the actual model number. It is an HEPC 7511-05. That's the model number of this Philips PC. Uh, I'm not sure if that's 5.1 or 7.1 surround sound, but it's got a lot of sound connectors. <laughs> it's got eSATA external SATA connectors, which are actually rather dusty. Six USB 2 ports, Ethernet, and your PS2 connectors for your mouse and keyboard. That's pretty much it. Unplug that out of the way.
boy. Now, I've already gone ahead and taken the screws off, but now I can't get the side panel. There we go. So yeah, there's a little fan I stuck on there, just as a little extra. Because there's nowhere in the front to put one. It's only got this one at the back, so... I put one at the front of the side panel so it sort of blows in, and my theory is, I hope, you know, the air would get blown in and then sucked this way through everything and out the back. I hope. Um, so I've got a bit of a bodge wire there for the, um, for the rear fan. So I believe, did I change that one? I may have changed that one. Yes, I did change that one. Because this came with a little adapter that plugged onto the same header that this fan plugged onto and you could plug this on the adapter with this so the um, CPU fan header basically controlled that and this fan problem was when this one slowed down so did this one and I didn't like that idea because I wanted to keep you know this going at full speed for maximum airflow and whatnot so I didn't like that which is why I changed it. But there's my video card. There's the Wi-Fi card hiding under there. I don't have a screwdriver at hand, but I think I will go and get one in a minute. There's the hard drive caddy. There is room to bung in another um, CD drive, should I want one. But there's only two SATA connectors, so if I did stick another CD drive in, it would have to be IDE. As this does actually have, an IDE header on there. Doesn't have an IDE header for a floppy drive, so you couldn't install that, not without changing the motherboard. Um, it's an MSI motherboard, by the way, but I can't find the model number. I know my big head's getting in the way. Oh, there it is. So, if you want the model number to uh, Google the motherboard in this and see its specs. It's G33M M. Well, actually, I'm not sure that's actually part of it. But under that, that's got MS-7357 version 1, 1 1.0. So, if you want to Google that, feel free. I may do that myself as well, so I can find out the maximum RAM this can handle. Oh dear. I have actually noticed there's two bloated capacitors on here. It's working, they're not leaking, but they are bloated, so they will need replacing at some point. Um, and that is one. I need a pointy stick, that's one I need, a pair. There is one, zoom it in. Not out, in. Uh, there's one right there, is that in the shot? Yeah, one right there, that one's bloated. And there's another one. Oops. Another one right there. Yeah, you can just about to see it. Yeah, I think the reason this is still working because they actually haven't started leaking yet. Emphasis on yet. But it's actually strange, it's a good motherboard. I wouldn't have expected that. But then again. Like I said, this was just caked in dust, so if this has gotten hot during use, that would be what would have caused these capacitors to start failing. But from what I can see, it's only those two. But I'm going to leave it for now, simply because it does work, and as the old saying goes, don't fix what ain't broken. And as you've seen, it does work fine. <laughs> Um, so I'll wait until it actually goes, then I'll have attempt to fix it, because I'm, I couldn't make it any worse if it doesn't work, could I? It's currently working, so if I now go playing with it, I could potentially make it worse. So, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. It works. But I may sort of fan out in that, because that's going to drive me nuts with the noise that makes. That's the original keyboard as well, because that's taken me all this time to realise. I've got a moth just coming through my window. 
Yes, I do random like that. I get distracted easily. No, on second thoughts, I've got two big moths coming through my window. Should we all have a party in here? Yeah? A moth party, you know, when he's attacking the camera. Now he's on my back, believe it or not. Look. <laughs> of all places to land. Anyway. Yep, Philips Free Vents. I'm guessing they changed the monitor at some point then, because it's a Dell monitor. And a Dell mouse. So yeah, I'm presuming they probably changed those, but that's a... Gone off my back? Yep. That's, um, I'm actually tempted to use this on my daily driver through there. Just because. <laughs> well, because I'm actually getting fed up with cables. Anyway, I think that uh, sums it up. Oh, if you're wondering how the 3 gigs is configured in here, the 3 gigs of RAM that is, it's two 1 gigabyte sticks and two 512 megabyte sticks, because if I actually lift this cable out of the way, as you can see, maybe, all four of the RAM slots are actually uh, occupied. Yeah. Anyway, that sums it up for this video. I've had a quick look. Uh, evening, everyone. Unless some other company did, you know, with the Philips name. Who knows? But anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you liked the video. And I'll talk to you all again very soon, I hope. Bye.